Hi, so this is the first in a series of videos about Microsoft Viva. This one is Microsoft Viva in a nutshell, where we go through all of the four modules, as well as some additional add-ons that you can get as part of the Microsoft Viva suite. And then if you're interested in finding out more, then check out some of these other videos that are not recorded or out yet. So you need to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when we take a deeper dive through each one of the modules that are available right now. I'm Gavin Jones. I help organizations save time for their employees at work to do more of the things that they love. And I've got a couple of free courses that might point you in the right direction. Check those out in the description below. And if you need more help for yourself or your organization, then feel free to book a call where we can go through and find your best next step towards the future of work and more modern working practices. So Microsoft Viva in a nutshell, it's designed from Microsoft to be all about the employee experience, which if you're like me, you find a bit strange that they've badged up some seemingly disparate apps into one thing that's employee experience, because obviously everything that we touch at work that Microsoft make is the employee experience. So if you found some of the things in my other videos where I go through some of the perplexing choices that Microsoft make about some of their apps, which really do impact and frustrate you, then you'll know that having then a different set of apps that they think are just to do with the employee experience seems a bit jarring. But let's go through what those modules are. So right now there's four modules, although it starts to get a bit confusing because you can get a couple of add-ons and they've just bought another company, which we'll go through a bit later. So, but for right now, you get Viva Learning, which we'll have a look at again in a future video in a bit more depth. But this puts a app in the Teams sidebar that then surfaces some learning content that your employees might want to know and learn about. So for right now, the most obvious sources of content is one, some Microsoft videos about Microsoft 365 that you get for free. And if you have paid for LinkedIn Learning, which Microsoft own LinkedIn and therefore own LinkedIn Learning, all of those videos are available in Viva Learning for you as well. So I don't find LinkedIn Learning particularly useful. When I was in my corporate job, we had it available and I'm not sure anyone ever watched any of those videos. I certainly didn't watch any. I went to have a look at some and I just found them a bit slow and a bit boring might be biased, but even before I started doing YouTube videos, I was a big proponent of learning stuff on YouTube. So I wanna learn by doing, I start doing something, find that I'm stuck, and then go onto YouTube to find out how to do it, and then carry on doing it. LinkedIn learning, for me, doesn't do that. It's just in case learning, everything sort of structured that you go through an entire course, um, but I don't find LinkedIn Learning particularly useful, and therefore don't find Viva Learning particularly useful either. So the other, the only other bit that you can do in Viva Learning, or the main other bit you can do in Viva Learning, I should say, is assign learning or courses to someone else. If you're a manager and you've got some employees, you can assign those some courses to uh, that person. It'll appear in their list, and then they can go through and watch those uh, whenever they've got time. But probably they won't have time to sit down and do those learning because you're not making time for learning. But Microsoft are working on that as well with some things that are coming out in 2022. So apart from having it in your list, you can bookmark things, it appears in Teams, you can you know, ping uh, links to those videos to, to other people. Then Viva Learning, for me, isn't really doing much to help us learn right now because all the content's the same content that's always been available in LinkedIn Learning. Uh, anyway, there's some other learning partners that are going to show up in Viva Learning. But you know, it's 2022, we've got the entire internet, just having that in Teams uh, isn't much of a benefit for me. It does integrate into some learning management systems that HR use. But again, I've never seen those actually be useful in uh, any of my corporate jobs or for any of my clients for the people that are actually doing the work. I'm sure HR love them. So second module is Viva Insights, which I I think is a massive missed opportunity for Microsoft as it's implemented right now. I think it should have held off, just got everything sorted and launched it. But obviously that's not how software works these days. We like to launch something and then mess about with it as it goes on. I'm sure that people will have looked at Viva Insights as it popped up in Teams sidebar even a couple of months, if not a year ago, I can't remember when it came out, found out there's nothing in there and then never looked at it again. But Microsoft keep putting more and more stuff in there. So Viva Insights used to be 
my analytics and if you go onto the web bit of Viva Insights when you click on something it jumps you back out into my analytics at the time of recording which is a bit jarring. I preferred my analytics and workplace analytics because that had a distinction between stuff that you can see about yourself and stuff that the organization could see about the entire organization anonymized so that no one uh, you couldn't see any individual that was doing anything. Viva Insights sort of badges all of that together so there's some bits of Viva Insights you get for free which is like the my analytics bit and there's some bits of Viva Insights you have to pay for, which is then getting workplace analytics and some of the manager diagnostics and stuff. So I'm sure it's gonna be amazing once it's all filled out. It's just quite complicated at the moment to sort of navigate through for a normal person just wanting to know what it's all about. But it basically scans all of your emails, your meetings, anything in your calendar, because Microsoft you know, know everything that's going on in there. Again, it's all anonymized. Only you can see your, your own data for you, but it'll start to surface some things that might be useful. The Viva Insights app in Teams is uh, doesn't have everything in that uh, my analytics used to have in. If you go into the web version of Viva Insights, that's got different stuff in than the Teams app. So again, feeding back to my frustration that you might have seen on things I hate about Teams is just the amount of different apps and places that have got slightly different functionality uh, is really annoying. But if you want to check out more about Workplace analytics, which you now get if you pay for Viva Insights, that is amazing. I'm surprised that Microsoft don't talk about that more. If you've got an organization of say 100 people or more, probably worth getting. It's very, very cheap for the insights that you can get out. And uh, you can check out my interview with a couple of Microsoft employees that used to work on workplace analytics, now called Viva Insights, in this video next. There's a link in the description as well. So Viva Topics is what was Project Cortex that Microsoft were talking about for quite a long time. I'm surprised you have to pay extra for it, to be perfectly honest, my initial view. But the idea is that it scans everything in your entire organization. So every single document, every message, every email, everything that you're sort of collaborating on, it's sort of trying to gather all of the organizational information, knowledge, put it into some sort of categories for you so that someone new into the organization or someone that's been around for a while can see what's going on in the organization and get the information they need. And it's sort of taking away, I guess, ideally, a knowledge manager that can go and that would have needed to go and do that work for you. It's sort of driven by AI. I have never used it in practice, but for people that have used it in practice, I know that actually it one takes a long time for it to scan everything in the organization. And you still need someone to go through and create all those topics into some sort of meaningful knowledge base. So if you've got that person to do that work anyway, I guess you need to assess how much time is it really saving from them just like creating a SharePoint page about a certain topic versus like, you know, Viva topics coming up with everything and who's, you know, the right person to go and speak to. Probably someone in your organization knows that anyway, and they can just go and create that, create that page for you. And then lastly, Viva Connections is probably the oddest one to sort of get your head around, I think. But again, we'll have a deeper dive into this. So Viva Connections puts a link in the left-hand sidebar of Teams, which then surfaces your main intranet page. So it's just your existing intranet page, your existing homepage for the organization that you can then see in Teams. But then it also then comes up with these new Viva Connections cards. So in the, as you can see on this graphic, in the mobile app of Teams, you can have it so it just displays the Viva Connections dashboard, which is a list of cards which you then can then pop up and interact with. On the web version or the Teams version, whatever the homepage, you can then add in a Viva Connections feed, which tries to surface some other stuff, some other cards, some of the you know, videos that you've got in that Microsoft 365 environment for you, which sort of, is a bit odd because it sort of overlaps with some of other web parts you can get in SharePoint anyway. So it's bizarre, sort of bizarre that it's called something else. It adds a little layer of complexity and some other stuff that you need to set up if you're an admin and some other stuff that you need to manage if you're uh, involved in the content. So that's a bit of a, a bit of a strange one and we'll have a deeper dive 
into that in another video as well. Also that was announced a while ago is Microsoft have just bought Ally.io, Ally, depending on how you say it, I think it's Ally, who knows, for objectives and key results software. So this is gonna be fairly exciting, I think, it depends how Microsoft implement it. Uh, it's gonna come into the Viva suite, but this is where you can set and cascade objectives and key results throughout your organization and track people doing that. So in my old corporate job, we used to use SAP success factors to do that. Uh, having that in Microsoft, I think would make more sense potentially, but yeah, Microsoft have bought Ali.io, that's gonna come into Viva. There's no news on pricing or how that's gonna show up in Microsoft right now. It's still just uh, running as a separate service. If we jump onto the pricing of Viva, and then it shows you what you get just as part of your normal Microsoft 365 subscription, and then what you need to pay for any add-ons and which additional features you get as part of that. So as you can see the top level, all of Microsoft Viva connections you get whether you've got the Viva suite or not. So that's cool. Viva learning, you pretty much get most things in there for free. Recommendations and progress tracking, that's what you need to pay extra for. Um, integration with partner content providers, you need to pay extra for, but you know, if there's no services that you want to use in there anyway, then obviously you need to, to pay for those. And I think you need to pay for the services separately as well. So that's uh, something to bear in mind. And integration with LMS, that's what you need to pay for. And then all these things coming in 2022 at some, uh, at some point. So, you know, getting content uh, surfaced for you, uh, blocking time for learning. So sort of linking up Viva Learning and Viva Insights. So Viva Insights at the moment, you can block time for uh, focus time. That's blocking time for learning. So, you know, how many times, what, well, how many times of stuff do you need to block out time for, really? Viva topics, so topic relevant learning, be interested to see what that's all about. And learning content in Viva connections. So, I guess, again, surface and some cards that's got your Viva learning in it. That could just be a web part that they could have done for free uh, from LinkedIn learning if they really wanted to. Viva insights, you get pretty much all of the personal insight stuff. So uh, inline suggestions in Outlook, which I think is really useful. I'm surprised that Microsoft have not done that in Teams because the uh, insights add-in in Outlook is really, really useful. Uh, the insights app in Teams, not so useful right now, I don't think so. The daily briefing email, don't find useful at all because I'm using to do anyway and it's just telling me stuff I already know. So it's another email to get rid of. Uh, monthly digest email, I used to like the Monolithics email, to be honest, just how it looks and shows up, uh, I don't like anymore, but that's just me. Let me know what you think in the comments below. So premium personal invites and initiate shared effective meetings plan, that's coming soon, I have to pay for that. Uh, premium personal insights, so effective meetings tab is coming soon. These are the ones at the bottom that are worth having. So manager insights, uh, you need to pay for. Leading insights for seeing trends across the enterprise, you need to pay for. Customer analysis tools and accelerators, uh, you have to sort of pay for. That is well worth paying for. That is absolutely amazing. And again, you can check out the video and interview I did with a couple of Microsoft Viva employees here. And then Viva Topics, you don't get any of Viva Topics for free as part of your Microsoft 365 subscription. Everything is you need to pay for. So it's topic highlights, address SharePoint Office, Microsoft Search, uh, topic cards, pages, and centers. Uh, that's just arranging the topics it's found for you. Uh, expertise finding and search connectors, so index items. Uh, all of that so you have to pay for. And then topic highlights in Teams, Outlook and Yammer is coming in 2022. Answer concierge and contextual search, I think, is, uh, where they're linking up, you know, answers that pe people have already done for you. Again, you could just make it an FAQ page about a certain topic already for free and you need someone to manage that. So that's all available as a bundle. I'm not sure if that bundle is going to include uh, Ali.io when that comes in. Who knows, they might put the price up. Uh, it's a discount at the moment. And interestingly, if you scroll down a bit more, it says Microsoft Viva with Glint add-on. You can get for even more money. But Glint seems to be like a employee survey sort of program. So it's got real-time feedback, AI-driven insights and effective action. So equipping managers to take action. We used to use, a, at my corporate job, a complete third party to do all of that data gathering and playback to the organization. Uh, for us, if this is included as part of Viva or as an add-on, 
Um, that sounds quite interesting to me. So it looks like Microsoft have acquired a third party provider and they're just in the middle of sort of merging that into Viva. So it looks like at the moment you can get it as an add-on, you should get it, but it's still a separate web page. Presumably at some point they'll just merge that into Microsoft and into the Viva platform for you. So let me know what your initial thoughts are of Microsoft Viva in the comments below. If you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up because that's the best way you can help me in the algorithm for free. And if you really liked the video and want to see more free content coming out, then consider buying me a beer using the link in the description below. And like I say, if you need any more help, then check out some of the links in the description or the first comment of this video. You've got some free courses that you can sign up for or a call where I can help put you in the right direction, either personally or as an organization to see your best next step forward if you want to save time for your employees and move towards a more modern way of working. But thanks for watching so far and see you in the next video.